Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We're going to go ahead and get into everything you need to know so far here on the day and what's going to be transpiring throughout the entirety of the day today. It looks like 10-year treasury yields are up a little bit. This is putting some downside pressure here, at least from the start of the markets. So I want to give you guys the latest on uh, maybe what's going to be happening today. So, uh, with that being said, we do have an update on AMC stock as well. We are coming off of the weird rally that we seen yesterday mid-trading. And a lot of people are contributing this to the writer strike that did end yesterday. So, uh, we have a lot to get into in a very short amount of time. Hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. Source your comments, questions, or concerns down below in the comment section. So, first things first, like I said, AMC stock was up 6.24% yesterday. Here right now, AMC stock is down about 1%. So, not <laughs> an AMC stock being down 1%. It's like it's not a bad day it's not a great day it's kind of an amc day you're just down slightly a little bit now on a technical basis you are above your eight day moving average that is really good news that's exactly what you want to see but you really want to get above about nine dollars 71 cents per share nine dollars 50 cents call it in that range before you start to look towards an even bigger rally this you know, breaking above eight dollars is great. Breaking above eight fifty is is great, but you really need to break above this downtrending line from the lows. That's really what you need to break out above. So we're close to that, and when we do, that's going to be more confirmation of a continued larger rally to come. Now, I think there is a multi hundred percent rally that is likely coming here for. Uh, AMC stock, but we're at a weird moment in time where the markets are kind of just doing whatever they want. Like TLT, treasuries, the higher for longer has hit the long end of the yield curve. So the yield curve, whenever anyone says the yield curve, it just means your two year treasury or your three month treasuries, your six month, your one year, your two year treasuries, your five year, your seven year, your 10 year, your 20, your 30 year. The yield curve, right? It's what's the yield doing on the three month? What's the yield doing on the 30 year? What's that curve look like? Normally, the yield curve should be low at the low end or lower at the low end and get higher for longer. Because if you invest your money, you should get paid more for investing it for longer. Well, what's happened over the past 18 months or so since the Fed started raising rates is the short end of the curve well i guess for like the last year now pretty much the short end of the curve has paid you more than the longer end so the curve has been uninverted well normally you get an uninversion right before a recession and you are seeing the uninversion right now but what's happening is the the 10 year is rising more than the short end that is already really high so normally right before a recession the two year would start to come down as the markets start to expect rate cuts that's normally how you get an uninversion of the yield curve this time the yield curve is unver uninverting because the 10 year is rising to almost match what the two year is doing so what's actually happening is the yield curve is uninverting, but it's happening very strange. It, it, usually this does not happen. So the long end of the curve is finally acknowledging what the short end of the curve has been forced to acknowledge, that the Fed has been raising rates. That is effect of the short end of the curve. But the long end, like the 10-year, they're starting to realize, hey, the Fed might really be higher for longer. So those rates are going higher, and that is affecting... Uh, one valuations for the market it's increasing the odds of a hard landing and it's just reducing economic activity it's putting a further drag on the economy your short end of the curve is not where people borrow at right your tenure is where people borrow at that is what really affects like mortgage rates and you know auto loans and and things of that nature that's the competing asset 
Real, really for for capital it's not the two year that's not what banks go out and buy for the most part they go out and buy like the 10 20 30 years so as those rates go higher that actually puts the real cr crimp if you will cramp on the economy so that is uh, one of the problems that we're seeing and here today it looks like TLT uh, which tracks the 20 year Treasury ETF that is down about 0.61%. If this chart continues down, that's putting pressure on stocks, right? And this chart is hitting new lows, meaning that yields just continue to soar. Bonds pl or stocks played along with this for a while, like you've seen really throughout 2022. For some degree, stocks did play along here. And then once you got to 2023, stocks started to rise as TLT continue to fall so there could be a little bit more catching up to do if you will in equity markets based on what bonds have already done and you can see this is kind of the bump we've seen in the beginning of 2023 and now you've started to even come down in a bigger way whereas on the weekly chart for stocks You've got the bump, but stocks have only just started to come down. So that's something you guys definitely want to be watching for in your trading. It's all about the bonds. It's all about the yields. What are the yields doing? Now, yields are rising a little bit here on the day today so far. If you take a look at the 10-year, uh, up about or down about two basis points it looks like the two year as well down about uh two basis points when this does update here it's going to be up as you can see tlt is uh down 0.65 percent this is directly based on uh, the bond yields themselves now if we look at the kre the regional bank index that is down a little bit today if you take a look at USO, that is down about 2%, so that is uh, definitely great news. And it looks like the dollar is uh, going to be up just a little bit today. So the dollar is something else you guys definitely want to be watching. If this dollar continues its upward move, this puts a lot of pressure on company earnings. And this is really the, the largest rally of the dollar sustainable rally that we have seen of the dollar in uh 2023 in in general like at all uh yeah so that's important you also have uh some of your key banks which are not doing well a bank of america a city these guys are hanging out lower in some cases um, than where you were back during the banking crisis in march so while everyone's excited about stocks and a, a, a new year and everyone's been happy about 2023 the banks over here have just slowly been dying so if you look at what wall street is doing where capital is going it's not into the banks i will not be excited about this market until the banks start to actually recover and show some strength specifically your large banks like a bank of america or a city there's there's no reason why these guys are hitting their lows that they have seen they have not seen since the banking crisis back in march now, if you take a look at the economic calendar, initial jobless claims came out at 207,000. The consensus estimate was 210,000. This is only up 2,000 from last week's number. So this is one of those data points that is kind of forward looking, if you will. It's from last week. It's not you know one or two months delayed like the government data so the fact that your initial jobless claims are not rising this is probably what is having the positive effect that is driving yields higher it's just not as bad as markets wanted to see so that could be something that could give us some downside pressure you also have fed mester that is speaking right now and they have kind of the same things to say as they have usually as of recently higher for longer uh fewer rate cuts than markets had expected really driving home that higher for longer on the yield curve but other than fed speakers you really don't have all too much data coming out you do have um some data coming out from japan 
later on tonight at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That could be important, but I doubt it unless there is kind of a, a big change in that data. Tomorrow morning is going to be your big data report. That is your non-farm payrolls and your unemployment rate. That is what is going to drive the move the rest of this week. But it wouldn't surprise me if there's a little bit of weakness today just heading into that non-farm payroll report. Now, a big question is, if you are an investor in AMC stock, is why why has this data flipped to now be so bullish on AMC? You're seeing a 2 to 4x call to put ratio on any option expiration that you look at. For this week, you have about a 2 to 1 ratio for calls to put. So there's about two times the amount of calls relative to puts expiring on Friday. Um, for any other expiration, it, it definitely varies, right? For October 27th, there's a 4 times higher call ratio on November 3rd there's a three times higher call ratio right um, but even for uh, next week it's it's not so much it's kind of neck and neck if if you will so uh, pretty interesting things happening here with AMC's data it looks pretty dang bullish right something has definitely flipped and has Turned bullish on AMC stock. Someone out there is uh, bullishly positioning in AMC stock. And I do think that is part of why AMC is likely to get a multi 100% rally. If you look at the put to call ratio as well, it hasn't moved around all too much recently. Uh, you're at 0.79. Uh, it's it's kind of bottomed out here, but you're at the lowest levels that you have seen since back here in November of 2022. Now, we, we used to see multi 100% rallies quite frequently with AMC stock. We haven't seen that in a long time because of, I think, the put to call ratio being so high, being, you know, two to three times the amount of puts to calls. It's hard to really get a rally and continue a rally when there's just not a lot of call activity out there when there's so many more puts relative to calls you, it's just hard to string together a gamma squeeze if you will when there's not enough calls now if you take a look at the live short interest of free float for amc stock that sits at 12.13 percent about 24 million shares that are currently sold short i'm wondering if we start to get some of these uh, shares out on loan, which have jumped from 26.23 million to 32.17 million. I wonder if some of these shares start to get reflected in the short positions or not. That'll be pretty interesting to see because we're not getting that reflected in the estimates right now. Um, and there's, there's quite a gap now. So to see a couple million more shares that are actually sold short would not surprise me. Looks like about 29,000 shares um, are getting reduced from that number today. If you take a look at the cost of our average, that's at about 3%. Cost of our max at about 6%. Cost of our minimum at 2.32%, um, guys. And what I actually found very interesting... Um, we go ahead and see. Um, see the put to call ratio on the markets. Actually, I, I can't find the chart right now. The put to call ratio on the markets themselves actually jumped big time yesterday. The Russell, the IWM, had four times the amount of puts relative to calls yesterday, and IWM was flat yesterday so i would be very um kind of critical on if this is the turning point in the markets now i know amc can can follow the markets amc can inverse the markets let me know what what you think is going to happen do you think if the markets rally amc stock is going to rally or do you think if the markets crash is amc stock going to rally on one hand if you get a collateral crisis we know there's a lot of collateralization of amc stock and collateral being used as secure kind of to secure some of these short positions we know a lot of that is going on so let me know what you guys think but we did see a lot of put activity yesterday so that is very interesting something i want to be watching um pretty dang closely and still this 
doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but we're not seeing option activity as far as positive order values coming through from Ortex. That really makes you question like what in the world is going on. But if you take a look at the option activity uh, here so far today, uh, 60, almost 68% of the volume is calls and 32% is puts. So there's a lot more calls trading hands, uh, you know, yesterday and today, and really recently over the past couple of weeks than what you have seen in a very long time. So that sentiment has flipped, and I do think that sets us up for quite the rally. But again, you have to get above about $9.50 per share. The RSI already looks good. That's at 33.72, and the MACD is all. I mean, obviously, going in the right direction here, getting pretty dang bullish. But you have just been pinned. Just at the bottom here, you've started to kind of break out to a new level. We really need to see what ends up happening today. If we can string together another strong day today, that's going to be really good news. If we can somehow get above $9 per share, that is uh, really good. I'm not going to sit here and say we're going to go to $9.50 today or you know $10 per share. That would be great, but that's probably pretty unrealistic to sit here and tell you guys that. But if we can get above $9 per share by the end of after hours trading today, tomorrow could look really, really strong. As you guys do know, the option activity at $8.50, you have about 20,000 calls that will go into the money expiring this Friday and at the $9 call you have about 13,000 for open interest at the 950 you have 5,000 for open interest and at the $10 uh, call you have almost 11,000 for open interest so there is millions of shares that would need to be bought of AMC stock if we did just start to go above 850 into the $9 range and that could drive us even higher that could drive a push to $10 per share by the end of this week thus I believe starting the multi hundred percent rally that is to come so uh, that is going to do it for this video let me know what you guys think about all of this information down below in the comment section are you bullishly positioned for a rally are you waiting for confirmation have you just been buying the whole time let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section if you guys want to come join the trading community link down below in the description of this video thank you for watching enjoy the rest of your day and i will see you in the next one